Hello, my name is Dr. Kahlo Shukru. I'm based in the Education Studies Department of Liverpool Hope University. In this lecture series, what I'm going to try and do is try to show you how advertising may be influencing children, both in terms of not just their shopping behaviour, but also shaping their way that they think, the way that they see the world around them. Uh, and I'm going to do this through a series of lectures in which I'm going to start off by exploring how much advertising is just impacting us all. But then I'll start to pick apart the impact that advertising has had by looking at how it can persuade us to change our attitudes and how it can even cause us to uh, take on stereotypical views or to shape our worldview on issues like gender. Finally, in the last lecture of the series, I'll be exploring uh, ways in which we can help our children to become more resistant to the effects of advertising. In this first lecture, though, I want to explore the question of exactly how much advertising we're being exposed to and how much of an impact does it have. It's very difficult to get an exact number on how much advertising the average person sees in, in a day. There are all sorts of numbers flying around and they're all fairly mind-bending in terms of exactly how much time we spend looking at advertising or how many adverts we see. Estimates range somewhere between 40 to 60 minutes of advertising viewed per day, which would lead to us viewing maybe about 35 to 40 hours per year, just adverts. Uh, or if you want to just talk about online adverts, the estimates there are around about between 50 or 60 banner adverts a day, which would add up to a fairly impressive 20 to 25,000 banner adverts in a year. That's an awful lot of advertising that we're seeing. Um, I think often we underestimate how many adverts we see or how much we're exposed to because we're just not paying that much attention to them. They're going on around the things that we're paying attention to. But just because we're paying only a little attention to them is not the same as paying no attention to them at all. And as I'll show you in these series of lectures, they are having an impact. What about children though? Are they being exposed to the same amount of adverts as the rest of us? And how exactly are they being sort of project how these adverts are uh, reaching them. Well, these days, children's exposure to adverts is pretty similar to that of adults because often they have the same access to the various forms of media that the adults do. Um, for example, research based mainly in America, I should point out, has found that the vast majority of children from a very young age have a television or a device in their bedroom um, and thus have the same access to various forms of media and online uh, content as the rest of us. It's also worth noting that children are often being exposed to adverts in places we might not expect us, for example, in schools. Again, this is more of an American phenomenon, but in many schools there you are seeing um, major brands are often marketing to children by sponsoring the materials that the children are using or directly through by having their services or products available in the school through vending machines. Often the schools see this as an essential source of revenue because they are quite cash strapped and so um, there's a need to have the advertisers and have the manufacturers involved in education simply to fund it. But of course it means that the children are being exposed to advertising even when they are learning. Um, but are these adverts having any impact and are the children aware of them at all? A study done by the American Psychological Association has looked at, uh, has reviewed uh, research done by dozens of, of other researchers in this area. And their findings of this review make some pretty sobering reading. For example, the review of research in this area done by the APA found that most studies were showing that younger than the age of about four or five, the children were not able to distinguish between adverts and programs. They pretty much viewed them as being the same thing. And that even after the age of five, up to about the age of eight or nine, so between five and nine, they were aware that adverts were different from programs, but their awareness of the difference was very cosmetic. They thought the adverts were shorter and sometimes funnier. And I guess we've all been there at finding the adverts sometimes more fun than the programs. But very importantly, before the age of around about nine, they, the children were not aware that the adverts were trying to persuade them of anything. So effectively, they didn't realize the adverts were trying to sell them anything. And this is a very important thing not to be aware of, as you'll see later on when we consider if adverts are having an effect and how they're having an effect. Now, what about the impact that these adverts are having on the children? Is there any research out there to show it's actually changing the children's behaviour? Again, part of this large APA review of other research on this topic, they found that 
there was research confirming that even one or two brief exposures to a product through advertising was enough to produce an effect in terms of uh, increasing the children's liking of that product. Um, and they found that this liking increased the more the children were exposed to adverts on that product. The research had also found that there was quite a number of products that parents were buying in order to avoid disputes with their children because the children were requesting them. So it's very clear that the adverts are affecting the children and that the children's requests are then affecting the behaviour of the parents. Um, a lot of the research that the APA looked at has focused on the impact of non-nutritious food products, so sweets and snacks and other th sorts of uh, things we eat just for the enjoyment rather than for the nutrition. And it's been found that actually there's quite a lot of evidence to show that advertising on this issue does seem to seriously impact on both children's liking of these products and their consumption of these products. Uh, and so increases in advertising for non-nutritious products have been mapped against increases in obesity in many countries. Most worryingly of all, it's been found that often children were showing positive attitudes and, and approval or opinions on products that weren't really aimed at them, such as alcohol and tobacco products. So even when the products aren't intended for the children, if the children are seeing them, they are being affected by them. Now, how exactly does advertising affect us? You ask most people, they'll tell you, advertising doesn't really affect me. And they'll say this while sipping the world's favourite cola and wearing clothes that have so many logos on them, they're like a walking billboard. So why is it that people believe this or want to believe this? I'd say one of the major reasons is that we all like to believe we're not easily led or easily manipulated. We want to feel we are strong and independent. And the idea that we might be being led around by the nose by adverts is an unsettling one. Also, I think we expect or we think that being influenced by adverts would be something you would see immediately. That if I watch an advert and I don't immediately rush out and buy that product, then I haven't been affected by it. But advertisers realise it's a much more gradual process by which adverts affect us. There are several models of advertising which use what they describe as a hierarchical model to show the way adverts impact on us. And what this means is that rather than it being I watch the advert and I immediately purchase the product, there are various stages in between. So initially the, I may simply become aware of the product, then I may learn things about it and come to like it, then I may come to desire it, and only then may I actually go out and actually purchase it. So an advert may be having an effect on you at any one of those stages, nudging you along that process further down the line, rather than getting you all the way in one go. I want to focus a bit on the first two stages, or early stages of those models. The idea that initially adverts only raise awareness of a product, and then the next stages tend to be ones where adverts make or change our uh, knowledge about the product, what we know about it, and how we feel about it. Let's look at the first of those stages, awareness. Now, awareness of a product can be achieved through a very, very simple advert, even one that just makes, shows us the product or shows us the logo of the product. That can often be enough to make us aware of it. And that awareness on its own can affect our purchasing habits. Simply knowing the product exists make us, makes us more likely to buy it. But what's interesting is that even that low level of awareness can be enough to change how we feel about the product. Research done by um, Robert Zajonk put forward a theory which he called mere exposure. And he found through his research that a very brief exposure to something, even one so brief that we're barely aware of it, can be enough to give us a, a small liking of that thing. So even a brief glimpse of it gives us a liking of it over something that we've never seen before. This tends to work most when it's something we haven't encountered before and have so no, no existing feelings on. Now, the amount that it makes us like us is not huge, but it doesn't need to be huge to affect our behaviour. If you think about it, even a small liking for a product can be enough to make you buy it when compared to lots of other products that you've never heard of. Now, before this makes you extremely worried about things like subliminal advertising and you're reaching for your tinfoil hat, let me reassure you that the amount it can make you like the product is very small. And also, the more you are exposed to the product, either by them or other means, can often completely reverse this effect and you go back to feeling neutrally about the product. So it's not a long-term effect it has, it's not a massive effect it has, but it is an effect, even just at that early stage. 
But of course, adverts are often trying to do a lot more than simply make us aware of the product. They're trying to tell us things about it. And it's those later stages in the influence process that I'm going to be looking at in the later lectures in this series. So if we're talking about how adverts might change what we know and how we feel, that's persuasion. And I'll be looking at that in the next lecture. It's also not just our shopping behaviour that we're worried adverts will affect. We're also worried about how it will affect our worldview. And so in the later lectures in this series, I'll be looking at how adverts might shape our views so they become stereotypical or how they may affect our views on gender. And lastly, in case you're getting very concerned about how adverts will affect you, in the final lecture in this series, I will talk about how we can uh, encourage children to become more resistant to advertising and reduce the impact that it's having on them. Thanks very much.